Welcome to a, another session of the Children's Fire Live Book Club. Um, you can join us here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Sorry, we are a little bit late. We had some technical difficulties, but we're here and we're re excited to read with you all today. So today we will be doing some movement. We will be reading the book and we'll be learning about some grandfather teachings. Um, so my name is Mariah Jensen and I am one of our social work interns here at Her Wellness. And what that means is that I help kids get connected to any resources that they need. Maybe you're struggling in a class and would like a tutor. I can help you make those connections as well as work through any problems you may be having. I'm also joined here with Val, if you want to introduce yourself. Thank you, Mariah. Um, yes, my name is Valerie, and I am an occupational therapy intern here at Her Wellness Institute. Um, I am someone who helps children and their families to be as independent um, as they want to be. I also offer support um, to help you to be the best that you can be and want to be. Thank you so much, Val. I know we had another friend that was supposed to join us, Felix, but... Yeah. I haven't seen him, have you? No, I don't know where where can be Felix. Felix? <gasps> Felix, there you are. Hi, Felix. Are you excited for book club? Yeah. yeah. Say hi to the relatives. Say hi. Hello. Hi, relatives. <laughs> um, relatives, before we get started, please feel free to grab anything, a glass of water, some juice, a blanket, and get comfortable while we go through today's book club. Um, I want to also invite you all to share any comments or questions you have in the comments section below. One of our other wonderful social work interns, John, will be down there moderating. So when you see her wellness pop up, that'll be John talking to you. And you can also feel free to message her wellness privately if you need to do so as well. So one of the best parts about Val being an occupational therapist and me being a social worker is that we get to work together. Mm -hmm. And it's great to work together with people that know different things than you because sometimes, like let's say you're working on a puzzle and there's puzzle pieces that I know how to put together, but maybe I need help putting together some other puzzle pieces. So I can lean on Val and she's a great help to help me put all those puzzle pieces together. Mm -hmm. Even Felix can help us put those puzzle pieces together. That's, that's right, Mario. Yeah. So now, before we get into the book, I want to invite you all to learn about some movement cards that Val's going to help us with. Thank you, Mario. Yeah. So the first movement card we have here is called a teepee twist. A TP twist, what we're going to do is we're going to stand up with our feet spread apart and hands above your head in the shape of a TP. Then we're going to slowly twist left and inhale and then slowly twist right and exhale. Then we're going to bend to the left and then bend to the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this with you relatives and so is Mariah. Okay, so remember, feet apart, up high in the sky, like a teepee, put your hands together. Then we're gonna twist left and breathe in. Twist right and breathe out. We're gonna go back to center. And then we're gonna bend to the left, breathe in. Bend to the right, breathe out. And arms to your side, and then you have a seat. What? How, how, how was that? Well, that how do you felt feel? great. Thank you so much. You're that welcome. was a really good stretch. And I think sometimes during the day, if we're sitting, and um, especially this world of Zoom and computers, mm -hmm. it's great to get up and get moving. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you, Maria. Yes. So now, relatives, we are going to get into our book. Um, mm -hmm. Felix, do you know where the book is? Hmm. I don't think Felix does. Do you know where the book is? I can't I find it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead. Hello. Oh, hi. 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 Hi.
So I have with me a few books. I think I might have your book. Oh. Um, so first great. I have Brave Bart and the Bully. Is this your book? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. so. Okay, okay. Um, what about this one? Everybody Needs a Rock? Mm, no. no. I don't think it's that one either. Mm. Have a few more. Maybe it's one plastic bag. No. no. I don't think so. Not that one. Hmm. Okay. Catching thoughts? No. no. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it's this one. I hope oh. so. The what ifs. <gasps> yes. 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 Xavier Yay. found our book. Awesome. Well, here you Thank go. Thank you so much, Xavier. You're welcome. Thank you, Xavier. Bye. 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 See you, relatives. So relatives, today we're going to be reading the book called The What Ifs, and it is written by Emily Kilgore and illustrated by Zoe Prosecco. Kara was a nervous girl, always jump Jumpy, always on edge, always wondering if something grim was going to happen. Because of this, the what-ifs loved her. Heavy, lumpy, and grumpy were the what-ifs are everywhere, in bright rooms and dark corners in busy hallways and hushed libraries, in big cities and small towns. They slink in from unknown places and swiftly attach themselves to people when they are la least expected. Then they whisper a question so quietly, so softly, so gently that the person usually doesn't know the what-ifs are there at all. From the moment the sun first peeked through her window in the morning to the time she pulled a warm quilt over her head at night, Cora's what-ifs followed her every move. What if my dog runs away? What if I forget my homework? What if the sun stops shining? What if my crayon breaks? Many people think about their what ifs for a moment or two, but can briskly brush them off. Cora, though, could not. It didn't matter if the what ifs questions were silly or frightening likely or impossible. As soon as Cora thought about them, the what-ifs grabbed a hold of her. One week, Cora may had more what-ifs than usual. Her piano recital was just days away. Even though she had practiced and perfected her song, the what-ifs started creeping in. You can see them jumping in right there. What if my fingers shake? Cora questioned on Monday. What if I make a mistake? Cora questioned on, wondered on Tuesday. What if nobody comes? She thought on Wednesday. What if too many people come? She worried on Thursday. By the day of her recital, the weight of the what-ifs felt unbearable. Cora stood backstage, anxiously awaiting her turn to perform. The longer she waited, the more what-ifs appeared, each one grabbing hold and weighing her down more than the last one. What if I trip on stage? What if the bench is too tall? What if the pedals are squeaky? What if I start coughing? What if I play the wrong note? 
What if nobody claps? Cora, a small voice whispered, Are you all right? Oh, great, Cora thought. What if Stella thinks I'm a crybaby? What if she doesn't understand? It's nothing was all Cora could muster before the tiny sob escaped her t thinly pressed lips. If it doesn't sound like nothing, Stella said. Cora took a deep breath and said in a hushed voice, I, I just, I just have too many what ifs. They make me imagine bad things that could happen. Like what if I mess up or what if I sneeze during my song? I can see all of her what ifs all around her. Everybody gets what ifs, Cora. Just a minute ago, I asked myself, what if Cora said I can help her? Listening to Stella, Cora started to wonder, what if she can help me? What if I can trust her? I wish mine were like that. My what ifs are grim, Cora looked down. Do you ever have good what ifs? Stella asked. I don't know where the good ones, Cora whispered. Or there were good ones. Of course they are, Stella said. Like, what if there's chocolate cake after our, our recital? Or what if I play better than ever, Cora chimed in. Peering at the boy, pounding his piece on the piano. Cora suddenly felt her what-ifs begin to change. The heavy, lumpy, and grumpy what-ifs slowly slunk away while the new ones arrived in their place. And look how happy all of her what-ifs are now. Just then, the teacher announced it was Cora's turn. Cora walked out to the piano without tripping. The bench, the bench was just the right height. Her hands quivered as they hovered over the keys. But then she sat down and began to play, and the grim what if slowly continued to disappear until... Clunk! She hit the wrong note! Oh no, what if everybody laughs at me? What if I get booed off stage? Cora wanted to cry. She tried to ignore the people staring, waiting for her next move. Then, out of the corner of her eyes, Cora saw Stella. What if I can do this? She asked herself. Cora took a deep breath and started to play again with confidence. Her fingers danced across the keys. When she finished, the room filled with applause. Cora took a bow and smiled at Stella. She couldn't help but wonder, what if? I made a new friend today. Look, they actually got all the chocolate cake they wondered about. And look, they're all gathering around and looking at the what ifs that are hovering over the teacher. That is our book today, relatives. Again, it's called The What Ifs by Emily Kilgore. That was a great book. What did you think, Val? Um, it was, you know, really an awesome message, you know, because sometimes we have those negative thoughts in our heads and like, what if this or what if that? 
and it's okay to feel that way. But um, once we have those positive thoughts, you mm -hmm. know, then we start feeling better about ourselves. And, and so, yeah, I really love that book. Thank you, Mariah. For yeah, all of I thought it was a great book too. And like you said, there's a lot of times where we might feel nervous or have these what if thoughts come into our head. But just like Cora did, you have to think about those happy what ifs and all the great possibilities there are. So with that being said, I think it's time to move around a little bit more. What do you think? I think so too, Mariah. Yeah. So I will do my next movement card. Great. This, one. this is called Fearless Feather. Okay, relatives. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit comfortably to, with your back straight. We're going to take a few deep breaths together. Then we're going to close your eyes. As you exhale, I want you to say out loud or to yourself, I am brave. Breathe in again. And we say it again, either out loud or to yourself. Do you know I'm going to go ahead and do it with all of you? Straight. We're going to breathe in. And breathe out. And you can say it out loud, or you can say it in your mind um, that you are brave. One more time. Breathe in. Breathe out. I am brave. I am brave. Thank you, relatives. How do you feel, Mariah? How did that make you I feel? I feel great. I think that was a great way to breathe through, especially thinking about what all of the what-ifs that come in in your life. So thank you for that, Val. You're welcome, Mariah. Yes. Um, I think we also have some grandfather teachings that we can talk about, too, relatives. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. So I'll just explain what the, grand, the seven grandfather teachings are. Okay, so the Sundan grandfather teachings um, in the Ojibwe culture have been traditionally passed down from generation to generation, orally through stories and ceremonies. Today, the oral traditions are being shared by those who carry the knowledge of such things. The teachings of all the Aboriginal cultures encompass the morals, values, structures, ceremonial practices, spiritual beliefs of the group. These teachings also ensured the survival of the people. Despite where the teachings may have originated, they share the same concepts of abiding by our moral respect for all living things. So today's grandfather teaching is truth. Here's a little turtle, truth turtle. Truth is represented by the turtle. As he was here during the creation of earth and carries the teachings of life on his back. The turtle lives life in a slow and meticulous manner because he understands the importance of both the journey and the destination. Truth is to know all of these things Apply faith and trust in your teachings. Show honor and sincerity in all that you say and do. Understand your place in this life and apply that understanding in the way that you walk. Be true to yourself and all other things. That was great, Val. Thank I you. think that really we can take so much away from this grandfather te teaching of truth. And kind of like Cora had in the book, she had a lot of what ifs, but we think it's great to remind ourselves the truth, the truth behind what we know we can do and we know we are good enough. What did you think, Val? I agree, you know, you speak your truth and everything that you do and just believe in yourself and know that you can do this and you're not alone. Well, relatives, that is a wrapping up today's Children's Fire Book Club. And you can come and join us again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. where we will breathe and move and relax and read together again. 
I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Sam? Uh, I do, Maria. Thank you. Uh, so, relatives, if you are able to, please join us later today, or me, um, for Sensory Fitness Live at 3 p.m. here at our Her Wellness Facebook page. And if not, we'll just see you next week then at 1 o'clock for Children's Book Fire. You have a good rest of your day, and be safe. Bye, relatives. Bye, relatives. Thanks.